Assalamu alaikum dear students Welcome to this channel Our today's topic is Kulam Salaam Dear students You are very much familiar with the fact That Like charges repel each other And unlike charges Attract each other It means that They exert forces on one another Now the question arises what would be the magnitude of that force? What would be the direction of that force? And would there be any factors which may affect that force? So to ans answer all these questions, there is a law which was given by a military engineer, a French military engineer, Coulomb, in 1875. And he did a series of experiments to find that the magnitude of that force and the instrument which he used for that was the torsion balance. So let's start this Coulomb's law. First of all, we state this Coulomb's law, then we'll uh, find out the formula for the magnitude of this force. So look at the board. This is Coulomb's law. According to the statement of this Coulomb's law, the electrostatic force between two point charges is this law has two parts is number one directly proportional to the product of magnitude of charges and second part is inversely proportional to the square of distance between them now the very first thing which is very important that is point charges. Remember that Coulomb's law is only applicable to point charges. Now what are the point charges? The charges are said to be point charges if the distance between the charges is very large as compared to their physical size. For example, here I draw, I consider two charges. Let's suppose this is one charge. Let me represent this by Q1 and then there is another charge Let's suppose this is Q2 and that these charges are separated by some distance R. Now, do these charges seem to be point charges? Yes. Why? Just look at the distance between them and their physical size. The distance between them is very large as compared to their physical size, so they are said to be point charges. So this Coulomb's law is only applicable to point charges. Okay, we write this uh, Coulomb's law in its mathematical form. F is proportional to that force is direct to the product of magnitude of charges. This Q1 and Q2, these are the products uh, of, uh, these are the magnitudes of the charges. So this is Q1, Q2, the product of the magnitude of the charges and is inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them. F is inversely proportional to R square. So we combine these two. F is proportional to Q1, Q2 over R square. We have combined these two relations. And whenever there is sign of proportionality, you know that we remove it, we introduce a constant. And here the constant is K, Q1, Q2 over R square. And here this constant K is called Coulomb's constant. Usually every constant has certain value and if we write the value of this Coulomb constant. The value of Coulomb constant K is 9 into 10 to the power 9 Newton meter square per Coulomb square. This is the value of Coulomb constant. But this value is different in different system of units. Now here we are using SI system. So uh, I would write value of Coulomb's constant value of Coulomb's constant depends upon 
this is very important this depends upon number one system of units so which system of unit we are using that is SI system and secondly it depends upon the medium between the charges now next thing is where is the medium any indication of the medium in this formula in this the, in this value of k so for that we have to write the formula of this k k is equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught and here comes the medium this is epsilon naught i pronounce this as epsilon not N O U G H T not usually for zero epsilon not this is in fact the property of the medium and we call this epsilon naught as permittivity of free space this is the per property of the medium what is this property you see this word permittivity and uh, this word comes from this permit. Permit it means permission. So it means that uh, if we define permittivity, then this is the property of the medium which would affect, which would affect the magnitude of the force between the charges. So this epsilon naught has certain value. This epsilon naught is the value of this epsilon naught. As you know, the value of k. And then that is very easy to find the value of epsilon naught if you just make this epsilon naught as the subject of the formula. So this would become 1 over 4 pi k and just find out the value. This is 8.85 into 10 to the power minus 12. And what would be the unit of this epsilon naught? You see k and epsilon naught, they are reciprocal of one another. So when you write the unit of epsilon naught, that will also be the reciprocal of the unit of k. You just reciprocate. So this would become, if this is Newton meter square per coulomb square, this would become coulomb square per Newton meter square. This is the value of epsilon naught. The permittivity of free space means vacuum. So it means that if these charges are in vacuum, then the per permittivity of that vacuum will be 8.85 into 10 to the power minus 12. So we write uh, the formula of uh, this uh, force and we are um, putting the value of k in this formula. So putting the value of k in this above formula. So f becomes f is equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught at at the place of k, we have put the value of the k, at uh, the formula of that k, k is equal to 1 over 4 by epsilon naught, q1, q2 over r squared. Uh, this is the Coulomb's force. This is the formula for the electrostatic force between the two point charges. 1 over 4 by epsilon naught, q1, q2 over r squared. Let me call this as equation 1. Now, second question. We have found the magnitude. This is an experimental law. Coulomb did it experimentally and he used the apparatus of torsion balance and then he found the magnitude of this force experimentally. Now, next is the direction of this force. So, the direction of this force is given by, if I write a sentence for that, that will do nicely. Direction of electrostatic force, as you know that force is a vector quantity, so it requires certain direction. So direction of electrostatic force, electrostatic force is always, this is very important, remember this, is always along the line, along the line, joining the two point charges. It's 
very important sentence. Okay, we find the direction of that electrostatic force. Now, you know, the like charges repel each other and unlike charges attract each other. Now, if we suppose these two charges to be like charges, suppose both are positively charged, then Q1 will repel Q2 and Q2 will repel Q1. What will be the direction of that force? Along the line journey, the two points. So this is the line which is joining these two charges. So Q1 will exert a force on Q2 in which direction? In this direction. This is the direction of the force experienced by that Q2 due to Q1. And let me represent this force by F21, the force experienced by 2 due to 1. And Q2 is also exerting a force on Q1. What would be its direction? It's again along the line joining the two point charges. This is the direction of force experienced by Q1 due to Q2. And let me represent this force by F12, the force experienced by 1 due to charge 2. How much is this force? We have just found a result for that. This is the magnitude of that force. Now, if I write force exerted by Q1 on Q2, we have represented this by F21, so I write the magnitude of this F21 and the magnitude of this force is equal to this, 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught Q1 Q2 over R square. Now you know that force is a vector quantity, so how do we represent this vectorially? So to represent this force vectorially, this is the magnitude. So you have to multiply a unit vector with it. You know, as you have studied this in your first year class, so we multiply a unit vector with this. So what is the direction of that unit vector? In the direction of the force. How do we represent that? Let me represent that unit vector as this. And this is the unit vector R21 in the direction of this force. Why 2, 1? Uh, sorry. We write this as 1, 2, R1, 2 is the unit vector in this, in the direction of force F2, 1. Why R1, 2? Because its direction is from 1 to 2. That's why we have written this as R1, 2. And what would be the direction of the unit vector in this direction, in the direction of F1, 2? That is, yes, that is, yes, R2, 1. Why? Because its direction is from 2 to 1. That's why we are presenting this by R to 1. Now, if you want to make this force or vector, vector, if you want to represent it vectorially, so you multiply a unit vector in this direction. So in this direction, the unit vector is R12. If you multiply this unit vector with this magnitude, it becomes a vector. So this is the vectorial form. Similarly, force exerted by Q2 and Q1 is equal to, how much is it? Yes, F12, F12 is equal to, what is the magnitude of this force? Again, the same. Why? The forces are same in both the cases, because this Coulomb force, this electrostatic force, is directly proportional to the product of the magnitude of the charges. So this is a special kind of force and it is called mutual force. So this force does not depend upon the single charge, it depends upon their product. So this force will always be the same for both the charges, irrespective of their individual magnitude. It doesn't mean that greater charge will exert a greater force on the other charge. No, 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 not at all. The force exerted by both the charges will be the same, whatever are their magnitudes. So F12 will also be the same. So 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught Q1 Q2 over R square. Again, we have to represent vectorially. And in this direction, the unit vector is R21. So you multiply it with this and this becomes a vector. Now you see from the figure, R12 and R21 are in opposite direction. Both are the unit vectors, so they are equal in magnitude. So you, we can write this as R12 vector is equal to R21 because both are unit vectors. Yes, of course, yes, but the directions are opposite. So we have to put a negative sign with one of these. So these are representing two equal vectors. They have same magnitude, unit magnitude, and 
the direction is opposite negative is representing that opposite direction so if r12 is minus r21 then if uh, i call this as equation 2 and this is equation 3 then equation 2 and 3 that would become um, hence if r12 is equal to minus of r21 then hence uh, this would become f12 is equal to f21 but with a negative sign students what is this do you remember do you recall something from this formula yes this is newton's third law of motion action and reaction are equal in magnitude opposite in a direction and they act on two different bodies yes F12, F21 is the force exerted by Q1 and Q2, and F12 is the force exerted by Q2 and Q1. These, the, these are the two forces, equal in magnitude, opposite in the direction, and they are acting on different bodies. So from this, we conclude that, that the electrostatic force obeys Newton's third law of motion. So dear student, this was our first part in which we have just fi find out the magnitude of the electrostatic force between the two point charges and the factors upon which it is depending. And in, in the second part, we'll describe about the medium. If there is a medium between the charges, then what would be the effect on that electrostatic force? Thank you.